From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. You know, every single week I have said we'd love to be with you personally to share some of the startling news that we gather from around the world. And I say it again, but uh, it's wonderful that we can go around the world with this program. How grateful we are to be in millions of homes right now. Millions of places, even in their offices sometimes, they watch this program. And I don't think we've ever had more of a startling program than today. This first thing, my first headline, take a listen. The gathering nuclear storm. Are you kidding? Nuclear? They're talking about nuclear weapons? Well, Jack's talked about it already. We're going to elaborate on that in a moment. And Congressional Reports warns of growing war threat. So there you've got the nuclear weapons, and they're warning us about a war threat. Can you believe it? So we better pay attention, friends. We better pay attention. And then South Korea and American allies face miserable end, says North Korea. Well, they're about to attack South Korea, and they say America, too. They're not holding back, and they're saying what they want to do. So we will be sharing all of that with you. It's in the newspapers, and we get oftentimes headlines that you don't get here in America. We get it from around the world. But before we get into this very serious program, I want to say thank you, Lord. You know what Jack did this week? He put his cane aside. You know, I brought him home from the hospital in a wheelchair. Next were the crutches, and then a cane. And now the cane's gone, praise the Lord. He's doing so very, very well. And Jack, I just praise the Lord. I can't praise him enough. Can I still have a candy cane for Christmas? Oh, you bet you. <laughs> oh, yes, Oh, yes. I thank the Lord. I tell you, I came home a helpless person. I didn't know my name. I didn't know one Bible verse. I was going to stop after four weeks because I said, I can't carry on anymore. Why, Lord? And one morning, it all hit me. And boy, it all came back. And I'm praising oh, yeah. the Lord. And I'm fired up to go until God calls me home. But something has happened as I meditated on God's Word after my mind came back. As I was meditating, the Lord brought back all 18,000 verses, and I could start quoting them again. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to carry on until my last breath and preach Jesus to the people. But Ephesians 4.11 says he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. I always knew I was an evangelist, of course, but God showed me in the last few weeks that I am to be a prophet to the nations. And it all started this week, and you're going to be shocked when you listen the next two weeks because now everything I've ever preached about Russia and China and North Korea and Iran and World War III, which is Armageddon, has just been announced in our newspapers. The Wall Street Journal a week ago said America must get ready for a nuclear attack and name the very countries in the Bible that say it will bring it. And that's a prophecy that's over 4,000, 5,000 years old, and we're going to deal with it the next two weeks. But before it comes, Jesus calls us home in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and it's called the rapture. Praise the Lord for it. And you're going to be comforted when you realize we're going to be you evacuated out of this mess when the bombs are falling. Amen. Oh, you know, that's positive news before we ever get started here, but we're going to go back 
to something that a great theologian said, Bishop Louth of London, England. I'm going to put this on the screen right now. And Jack, would you please read what he said? You're talking about oh, it. Oh, this is something. Bishop Louth of London, England, proclaimed the message of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 over 300 years ago in 1713, stating Ezekiel's prophecy without question relates to the latter ages of the world when Israel shall return to their own land, 1948. Ra signifies those inhabitants of Cynthia from whence the Russians derive their name. This formidable invasion of the land of Israel, God will defeat. The Persians from Iraq and Afghanistan from the east, the Ethiopians from the south, and the Moors, Libyans from the west shall join with Russia in this invasion and to see the great Wall Street Journal say it's coming. Folks, you're going to get shocked now, but listen, if there were ever a time you need to be ready for the coming of the Lord, it's now. Oh, absolutely, Jack. And you know, something came to my mind this week that actually the nuclear policies in this country rest upon the shoulders of those that are in the highest offices, of course. What they think about nuclear weapons and the rest rests on their shoulders, but Unfortunately, I think, the nuclear realities uh, seem very dim sometimes to those that are in power. Take a look at this, a gathering nuclear storm. Do you see who they are? There's Iran and, of course, whoa, Russia. And there is the North Korea and also China. I'm going to talk about those four in just a moment. But going on here, is the sun setting on America? That's a question mark. We better pay attention, especially those in the highest offices. Congressional report warns of growing war threat. Congress. Yes, we better, better listen. Now, Jack, is that where all of this is going? We've read about nuclear weapons before. But do you really feel that they're formulating right now? And those four countries are very important. I want to deal with each of them in a moment. Rick Sellen, not only does the Bible name those four countries, as we're going to see, but the invasion takes place against a place called Israel 18 times, Ezekiel 38 and 39. And there was no Israel since 70 A.D. when they were taken out of their land. But they came back in 1948. And God says in Matthew 24, 32, when you see the fig tree, Israel blossoming, comes back as a nation, 1948, and the battleground becomes Jerusalem. That's when I'm going to come. And ladies and gentlemen, it's all happened. It's all ready to go. And when your newspapers and your congressmen are warning you, you better think twice. Mm. Jack, you know that picture that I showed just a moment ago, the gathering nuclear storm? I want to give a larger picture of the four men right now. And there they are, of course. But I would like to jump down, if you will, Iran, China, Russia, and North Korea. I'd like to jump down to Russia first because they have been uh, right on the cutting edge and that's what this is all about from the very beginning. Russia creating cutting-edge universal nuclear battleship. Well, you know, they want to take over what's out there in, in the seas. You can't do this, you can't do that, and I'll fly by if you do. My, oh, my. Russia warplanes bomb Syria from Iranian base. Well, they're coming together with uh, some of the buddies over there also. There are warplanes going on. Now, I have said this before. That's another picture that I showed you, the Chinese leader. Russia and China have been buddies for a long, long time, and they're coming together even closer. China is disturbing new nuclear buildup. Oh, dear. Just like Russia. China flight tests new multiple warhead missiles. Oh, they're saying, you're not going to get ahead of us. We're going to stay even with you. So I would like, if Jack would please, to address these two countries. They've always been buddies, they always will be, and they're gonna be on the same side when Armageddon happens. They're gonna come down from the north, but they're gonna be buddies, they're gonna stay together. Russia 
and China, the two pictures there, Jack. They come down from the north and the east, Russian north, China east, and that's Daniel 11:44. For what? The battle of the latter years and the latter days. Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. It's here! First of all, Russia, Ezekiel 38, 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. And the Bible goes on to teach that they will head up Meshech and Tubal. Meshech is Moscow, and Tubal is Tubal, southwest of Siberia, but in Russian possession. And China joins with them. In just this last three days, China and Russia have signed an agreement to work together for what's coming in the future, the great battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. I don't have to say now, uh, this is my idea, and people say, oh, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Seventy years I've preached it. Three million have come to Christ. This is God's Word. Now, where do we get China and North Korea? Revelation 16, 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl of vial upon the great river Euphrates, so that the waters there were dried up, so that the kings of the sun rising from the east shall trouble him. And that is China and North Korea with their atomic weaponry. What? That's right. And how is it possible that the Euphrates River is going to dry up? Because in Tagarma, which is Turkey, Ezekiel 38, 6, they now have all the equipment, I'll tell you about it next week, to dry up the Euphrates River by pushing a few buttons in all of their new inventions. Wow, what an hour to be alive. And remember this, none of it could happen until a fig tree blossom. The fig tree is Israel. Joel 1, 7 and Hosea 9, 10, and they became a nation 48. So none of these prophecies could ever happen until they were there because the war is against Israel. And for 2,000 years, there was no Israel until 1948, and the battle is over Jerusalem, and they only captured that 19 years later. So there it is, the battleground. What? Are you ready? Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29, 18 times. We're there now. Every sign is here. The Wall Street Journal was right. Congress is right. It's coming. Be prepared as Americans because there's another guy there called Iran. And that guy is the most vicious man alive. He's made the dirtiest deals with the President of the United States of America. He's not keeping his promises. And our President even did something. It's a shame. He loaded him with $1,700,000,000 secretly. All right, we're going to talk about that in just a moment here, Jack. But I'm going to back up to something. Uh, the four who are mentioned in the gathering nuclear storm, uh, South Korea uh, is mentioned as far as one of their enemies. South Korea and American allies face miserable end, says who? North Korea. That's one of the faces of the four, North Korea. North Korea hails successful test of new rocket engine. Good night, they've really advanced. North Korea submarine fires ballistic missile. Oh, and then North Korea, U.S. pushes for sanctions over nuclear tests. Laughable. My, oh, my. We're laughing uh, in America. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to tell us what to do. Now, Jake, you've already mentioned uh, Korea joining with China and North Korea coming down. And they want to invade Israel more than anything, friends. They want to come right through Turkey and down to Israel and take over. But could I go on then to something that you mentioned a moment ago? And that's my next few headlines about Iran. Yes. All right, let's go on here. It is the Wall Street Journal. U.S. sends Iran two more loads of cash. All right, the first load, plain load, was 400 million in cash. Let's go on. Khomeini, we won't negotiate with 
Americans. Now, of course, uh, Khomeini is the leader of Iran. He's not going to negotiate with you. Hey, I thought we just sent him a lot of money. Shouldn't they negotiate? Iran threatened to shoot down U.S. spy planes over the Persian Gulf. They threatened us to shoot us down. And then going on, the 400 million legal, but not right. Well, now it's not 400 million. That has been boosted up to 1.7 billion billion dollars. 1.7 billion dollars for this criminal who runs Iran. And going on, Kissinger slams Obama for conceding to Iranian nuclear arsenal. My oh my, he's saying, don't do this, President, don't. And then one last one here before I go back to Jack. Saudi journalist, Molly Obama is paving the way for Iran to go nuclear. Well, you know, I, I just am so very, very sorry about that. But I have to agree that sending all that money over there is only helping them to develop nuclear weapons. Do you agree with that, Jack? Oh, Do you agree with yes. that? yes. It's the most devious deal that this president ever made. It seems like he set America up for a war. But this thing is the worst thing that's happened. God help us when those bombs begin to fly. You really believe they're going to be atom bombs? You better believe it. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30. And then Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be devoured by fire. Malachi 4, 1, the day shall come that shall burn like an oven. But get this one. This is Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. And it's all around that Euphrates River that's dried up so that the armies from the Orient can come through to join with Russia. What? Now, Armageddon is going to be fought in the Middle East as they come against Israel. I already said it 18 different times, Ezekiel 30 and 39. Look it up. But there's something else. Do you know that the Euphrates River has been the place where ISIS, the greatest murderers in Muslims in history, had their headquarters there? Yeah, that's right. Now, you'll understand this verse better. Revelation 9, verses 14 and 18, where it's going to be fought as it begins. Loose the four angels, the fallen angels, the demons out of the great river Euphrates. Why? To slay a third part of mankind, one out of every three, two billion. And the number of the army was 200 million million. What a war! And by these three was the third part of men slain, fire, smoke, and brimstone. That's atomic war, ladies and gentlemen. And the, the Wall Street Journal should put up this thing in the paper, a huge article naming the four nations that are in the Bible, all about an atomic bomb that's going to hit the United States of America soon. But let me comfort your heart right now if you're a Christian. I don't believe we're going to be here. Why? Are you listening? We're going to be evacuated as Christians, and it's called the rapture. And some of you say, well, I don't believe that stuff. Well, if you don't believe in the rapture, then you're never going to see the inside of heaven. Why? Because the rapture both times in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54, is the resurrection of the dead. And if you don't believe in the rapture, there's no resurrection of the dead, and you'll never come out of that grave to get to heaven. So let's just look at this a moment. In Revelation 3.10, this is a pattern. It says, I will keep you from, and it's the Greek word ek, out of, out of the hour of testing Armageddon that comes upon the whole world to try them that dwell on the earth. But how is he going to keep us out of it? Revelation 4.1, just move it up to the next chapter. Come up hither. And that's the rapture. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep be dead, but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound a yellow thing, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. 
and we that are alive and remain should be caught up together with the dead to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, ha, ha, comfort one another with these words. Now they're on the other side for seven years while that seven-year war is going on in the earth. But we're there, safe, and we're singing. In Revelation 5, verses 9 and 10, they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to take the seals in there and open it, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and we're going to reign with you on the earth. And they come back in their bodies to earth, settling in the new Jerusalem of Revelation 21 and 22. Read it this week. And they reign from there with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a glorious future we have. We don't have to be frightened. Right. Let's praise the Lord. He's coming and coming soon. But you folks who aren't living for him and you're Christians, you're all mixed up with the world and sin and drugs and sex and the rest. You better get right with God and soon because this can happen at any moment. God said these signs could only happen when there was an Israel, 1948, and they controlled Jerusalem, 67. You know, friends, the one reason that we bring all of this to your attention is the next part of this program, and that is to come to you on a personal level. I would just like to say to you, if the Lord came right now and he looked at you right now, would you be ready? Would you say, Lord, oh, thank you for coming? Or would you hold back? Would you be afraid because you're not ready? Have you ever opened your heart to the Lord, Savior of the world, Son of God, gave his life on Calvary for you to forgive you, forgive me, of all of my sins. Jack's going to pray a wonderful prayer right now of accepting Jesus. You know, if you have him in your heart, you're going to have peace even in this nuclear storm. I'm not afraid because I know I'm in the hands of the Lord. Jack, would you pray that wonderful prayer? And I want to warn you, when the Bema seat comes, and that's Christ calling the church home, he holds a service and they are judged for their works good and bad you need to get right with God you've been running to the liquor joints you've been running to the brothels you've been having sex of all kind your life is a mess you're loaded with drugs he's coming and the way it is now, every sign is here, every one of them. And they all had to happen at a time when Israel was in control of their own land. And it's our day, it's here. And that's where Armageddon takes place. Please, in Jesus' name, receive him right now. I'll cleanse you from all your sins. Every one of me says, Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you desperately. I've wandered far away, dear God. Now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've roamed. Now I'm coming home. I'm going to get back with my wife again. We're going to pull her home together. And oh, Lord, I'm going to drop some of these sins in my life. Help me, Jesus. And right now, will you come into my heart? Holy Spirit, come in to give me the strength to live for Jesus. I accept what you did for me on the cross. Wash me, cleanse me, save me. In your holy name, Jesus, amen. Amen. <laughs> did you pray that prayer? If you did, please write to me. There is my address. I'd love to send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. I like this little booklet because it talks about walking with the Lord in the nuclear storm that we're hearing about how good it is to walk that path with him. I'm going to look for your letter. I'll send this to you as soon as I hear from you. If you would love to have a DVD, Hearing the Truth or Is It a Lie? And my gift with it, The War on Truth, just hear what Chuck Oman has to say. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 
24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to emphasize, don't put off getting this wonderful offer. I want to just leave you with this very, very good thought. <laughs> Friends, I don't know why people keep changing churches. Do you? What difference does it make which one you stay home from? <laughs> oh, we don't want to stay home from church in this day and age. Oh, we we'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.